I just don't think this threshold's gonna cut it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's thick enough, but I want it to cover this gap here. And if it covers the gap as it is, it's not wide enough. So it would kind of just kind of stick out and be like that, which is ugly. I'd rather it follow the shape of the reveal here. So let's take this back and see if we can find something else that'll work. So now the trick is to get this board under there. And let's figure out how thick our board needs to be. So it looks like we've got a half inch between this, I guess you'd call it a rough threshold, and the gasketing. We want the threshold to be a little bit thicker, maybe an eighth of an inch, so it can compress this gasket just a little bit, and make sure we get a good seal. So that means we want our threshold to be five eighths inches and this is just a hair over three quarters so we need to take just a hair over an eighth off of the thickness of this now to make matters a little more complicated this rough sill is probably an eighth inch above the hardwood here so we're going to have to kind of shape the underside of the new threshold to make that work right we need to undercut this and by undercut, I mean remove the thickness from the bottom to about three quarters of an inch. We'll take an eighth inch depth off of this bottom all the way to where we get to a quarter of an inch over here. So this will drop an eighth inch and that'll stay as it is. But of course, that's just a scrap piece. And that's the actual threshold, which we're going to have to cut to fit in between here now. I paid $99 for this little thing, brand new, 20 years ago. And this is the original blade that came with it. I really only use it for ripping. I did do some small furniture things with it when I first got it. And I did a little dovetail drawer and uh, made some jigs for it, which I might actually have to use today. But before I do anything with it, let's change this blade. Since I've never taken this apart, I'm guessing we start by removing this throat. All right, I think it comes with some wheel. It used to have some blade changing tools stuck right in here and the side. I'm gonna need to find some because that takes a special wrench to fit in there. All right, I think you need this big wide spanner to go on this side. And then this actually looks like it goes counterclockwise. So we'll try that. that there. Feels like it's getting tighter. Wait, that was clockwise anyways. Let's try counterclockwise. There we go. You could probably not even take out this throat plate here. Probably do all this from the bottom because it's just wide open underneath. And this spindle is so dirty because it's never been taken off before. It doesn't want to unscrew. There we go. All right, there's the nut. That side was out. There's the little pressure washer, whatever you would call that. And that is a heavy blade. All right, so we're gonna try out this fruit. Do they still say fruit? I don't see where it says fruit. Oh yeah, there it is, fruit. Fruit Diablo 24 tooth ripping blade. Kind of try to oh, keep the packaging in decent shape so I can put the other blade in here just in case I ever need a you know a sacrificial blade so to speak for cutting something that I don't want to ruin a good blade on be careful not to bump any metal with it so here on the wood I'll put this back in now do I want to drop this through the throat the front of the saw is this way and though this is my first table saw blade change out at least I think it is I do know that the teeth need to face the front because the saw cuts towards you. 
So we'll see if I can get this in here without touching the teeth. And if I can't, I'm going to stick it up through the bottom. And it looks like I can't. Let's just tip it over. Stick it right on the arbor. Put my pressure washer, whatever you call this. I'm sure it's got a very specific name. And the nut. Tighten it up. Throat plate. All right, now I think we might have to make use of this little fence here I made. It has some wing nuts on the bottom that go through to some carriage bolts, which are actually recessed in the surface so that they're flush. This one's sticking up because it's not turned right. There it goes. And it slides over this little cheap fence here and carriage bolts go through these holes. And it locks it into place and that I'll just put it here. So I'll just pretend that gives me a nice tall surface to run boards upright on. I also made this little this little jig in case you uh, needed to run something upright at a 90 degree angle. And you would put your stock there. You, I think I did this to cut some bridle joints or slip joints, whatever you want to call them. Put the stock in there and go. And you can see I sacrificed the bottom part of that. Okay, take these wing nuts off. Make sure this is nice and clean. There we go. Now you can see how I extended the fence over both sides of the saw, so I have plenty of upright to guide larger things on. And we'll just check it for 90, and we are perfect. We'll measure three quarters of an inch on the inside here. We don't need to measure all the way along here, just enough to set the saw blade. But I'm going to put a reference We're in the middle here. Now let's bring the saw blade up to that line. I'm gonna need to lubricate this. Break the handle off. Our fence. Let's see, we want to take off an eighth from this side. So let's just do the thickness of the blade. Double check the thickness here. All right, let's just go for it. Let's go see how it fits. Wait a minute, this is obviously too long. We can't go see how it fits. I should have done a test block. <sighs> Let's do a test block really quick. I can cut off a couple inches of this and we'll be okay. And I just realized I um, cut the wrong side. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I just picked the other side because it didn't have a sticker on it. We'll just cut the sticker off. Test block. All right, here we go. Let me go get a little level and see what that looks like before we do anything else. It really depends on where I put it. I put it there. It's perfectly plumb. If I slide it forward, it becomes a little less plumb. What I'll actually do is I'll relieve a little under here so that it can drop down a little bit further and not have anything to rock on like that. So ideally what I would like to do is put a slight bevel to this so that it tapers in. But the way my fence is on the table saw, it would like to bevel the opposite way. So I have to figure something out. 
So in order for me to move my fence to the other side of the blade, I would have to take this off again. Hmm. You know, I've never tried it reversed, but it's always the first time. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that gently flushed up against there. I'm going to lock the fence down. I'm going to take this out and then I'm going to tilt the blade just a couple of degrees. It looks like four, four degrees. Uh, do I want to run this test block through? It looks a little dangerous. <sighs> Let's just run the main thing through. Hope it doesn't do any damage. I think we'll be all right. Goggles, earplugs, board, my push stick close by. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, now we have to switch all this back the way it was so that we can bevel this and this. So this is going to be a little tricky too since we already have a cut here. Actually it's even going to be a deeper cut. And when we push it up against the fence it's going to want to slide flush which is going to change the angle of the bevel we want to create here. Which is fine. We can just steepen the angle of the blade to make up for it. So we want to run a decent bevel on this side and a decent bevel on this side to soften those edges up and lessen the tripping hazard. Let's make the bottom. I want something for it to still to ride on there. And since I don't have a zero clearance fence, I can only go so close. So that gives me about an eighth of an inch to ride on, which is hopefully enough. So it won't fall down into the throat. Now this obviously doesn't have to be such a deep cut. So for safety's sake, we'll lower that. And let's put a good angle on there. All right, let's just run these bevels and see what we got. Nice and slow. So we'll do the bottom bevel first. So here's what our custom threshold is looking like. It's got a little bit of saw marks there, some burn, just a little, not too much. But it'll definitely show up when we put some polyurethane on it. So I'm gonna take a block plane and smooth down those edges and then sand them as well. So I have this stop on the edge of my bench but I think it's a little too high. So I need to raise this board up so it still is stopped by the stop, but my plane can clear the stop. Yes, I should have used a thinner board for the stop. So here's a piece of half inch that I use as a straight edge. So I'm just gonna lay that there. That should give me enough clearance. I'm terrible at figuring out which way the grain is going, but if we end up going where the grain is pointing up this way, it'll want to snipe, I guess they call it. We want the grain to be going up this way if we're planing from this side. I'm just going to start. Oh boy. Now we'll know 
we're smooth when all that chatter stops. When it stops jerking along there, we'll know we have gotten somewhere. I'm going to try this smoothing plane that my uh, father-in-law got for my son at a flea market. Now we're getting somewhere. Yes. All right, let's try this side. So that is good enough with the plane. There is a little bit of snipe right there on this end, but I'm probably gonna end up cutting this off anyway. It's not perfect, but we can get the rest off with the sander. Some of it's like glass. Before I go fitting the threshold, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this rough sill here and probably cut back this foam. Now I'm going to use this scraper. And then clean it up a little bit with a little soapy water and let it dry for a minute. While we're waiting for that to dry, let me just say that my threshold is protected under this porch under here. So this never gets rain on it or anything. If yours is not, then you're gonna wanna seal everything with a good sealant, a good caulk before you go any further. But in this case, I'm not even gonna worry about sealing that. It's never been sealed before. And I'm just gonna coat it with a good primer. Just what's exposed, not this over here. Go ahead and pull the pins out of the hinges and take the door off. I'm just gonna pop the bottom off with the five and one tool here. There it goes. Take my smallest nail set. Get up in there. And you can work it the rest of the way up like this. We'll leave that like that with the pin still partially in it and do the other hinges first. So this is three and a half inches wide. So I want to mark three and a half inches from here because I want this to be basically flush with the front of my trim. So I'll go up three and a half. And 
and I'm going to take my combination square and I'm going to mark a line very lightly where this is. I'm going to mark it right there. You can see it. And I'll mark a line for where this is. And then where this is. And then where this is. Now I just need to measure the depth of each of these and transfer them here. So this, and I'm sure there are easier ways to do this, but that right there is the depth. So I'll transfer that to my board here. I'm just putting the base of the 90 flush with that. Let me get a mechanical pencil. Okay, that flush, make our mark. Take our next measurement. We're gonna go all the way to the original mark. Like that, tighten it up. Transfer it here. The next mark, I'm gonna go all the way back to my original measurement. Put this against the next reveal and push that to the line. Tighten it, that'll be the next mark. And there's nothing to measure for the last one because that's the end. So we'll cut the board on this line. Then we'll come in here, in here, and in there. So let's go ahead and draw out the waist. This is waist. This is waist. This is waist. This is waist. We'll just go ahead and cut the bulk of it off. So this is our last and outside cut. I need something a little less wobbly. I don't know that this is much better. Let's hope that's it. That is looking very promising. How do we keep this from moving? I should have marked both sides at the same time. Shoulda. Mm. I'm gonna have to make a reference line. Okay, so that is lined up. Let's put it on there.
All right, I'm just gonna jump in right here. Obviously, this is after the fact. The threshold is already installed, but I think I came up with a better way to do this, which I'm sure some people have already figured out. So after you get your lines running this way, so it's gonna go a little way right there. And then next, right there. Coming back, I don't know, about there. This one, back here. Here. All right, so I've got all these lines. Then I'm going to make this the exact same depth as the threshold itself. So I'm just making this three and a half inches, just like that. Then I'm going to go up and just touch that first mark here, and then use the fence of my 90 here to make a little line and come out. Touch this one, make another little line, touch this one, make another little line, and hopefully you can see this. We've gone over, and there is the shape it needs to be cut out. All that right there. So there is the shape of the threshold. That appears to be a pretty efficient method, but if you have a better one, please don't hesitate to add it to the comments. I would be absolutely stunned if this fit first try. Need to trim that a little bit right there. Pretty good. Paint and caulk will fill those cracks. Now we can put the door back on for the time being. Let's see if we can shave a little off the bottom without ruining this whole thing. So I need to shave some from this side and some from that side, I believe, to keep it nice and level. Let's do this side first. Get it nice and tight. Okay, now the object is to keep this right here flat. That's the most important thing. It can ride up and down a little, but it must stay flat. All right, let's just go see how that fits really quick before I even bother with the other side. Still a little tight on this side, but not tight on that side. I wonder after this gets screwed down, will that loosen up? Because that's kind of what it did on the other door. It does look like it has room. Let's check the level on it. It rocks both ways, which leads me to believe we just need to take out some meat in the middle. 
which I can do with a router with less risk. So let's do that. Now this is the first time I've ever used the fence. It's actually the first time I've used a fence on a router before, so bear with me. So I want to come all the way up to that ridge if I can. So I'm just going to slide it till it butts. There it is. Back off just a hair and tighten it. This is a 2.5 amp hour battery. Oh wait, no, it's a two amp hour battery that I bought for the impact wrench because it was more small and compact. And I think it only has a couple of bars on it right now. Yep, we'll see how it does. All right, now I'm going to move this fence in just a hair. Let's see where that lands. There's going to be a perfect overlap there. Unlock, power on. Looks like I need to change batteries. Got three bars on this five amp hour. And let's go one more time. All right, let's go try it out. Definitely a lot easier. Just see what it does when we screw it down. Okay, this is what our profile looks like after fiddling with it for a while. Now let's go ahead and drill some holes and attach it to the sill temporarily. I'm going to be using these stainless steel screws, square drive. And I want to do three of them spaced evenly across here. It really doesn't matter so much as long as I get the two side ones an equal distance from the edge and then center the middle one in relation to those two. So I want to find the center of this flat spot here. Looks like it's about at, we'll call that one and seven eighths. Let's come in about six inches from the side. Now one and seven eighths. equidistance from the two marks. Oh, look at that, 24 inches exactly. Well, that does make sense, doesn't it? I mean, if this is a 36 inch door, we came in six inches from each side. Well, right on the money. Pre-drill that really quick. I'm using a drill bit that has a built-in countersink. So we'll knock out two birds with one stone here. I'm going to give it a little pre-drill just to make sure it's easy to start. And I guess I really could have countersunk these and all in place, sped things up a little. Now let's go ahead and put the screws in temporarily. So it looks like we closed up that gap nicely. Oh, I like that. Tight, but not too tight. 
Perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna take that back up again and I'm gonna paint this with some gray porch paint. A couple of coats on that. And I'm gonna finish this while it's not here. So I'm gonna put a couple of coats of, actually probably three or four coats of polyurethane. And to match the floor, this looks like it is uh, oil-based. So I'm gonna use oil-based poly on that as well. I'm sorry. All right, I think that's going to be the last coat on the threshold there.
Tibby. Well, that's it for this four part series on how to install this budget, affordable, inexpensive entry. If you miss some of it, there will be a thumbnail at the end of the video for the entire playlist. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see y'all in the next one. Now in setup mode, follow the instructions in the Ring app. Well, that's it for this four part series on this inexpensive yet elegant entry. At least I think it's elegant. Elegant, the right word. Is that not manly enough? Uh, maybe your wives will like it.